Hey, this is Stacy from Let's Cook, y'all. Welcome back to our channel. If you're new, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We hope you'll enjoy the content on our channel and you'll consider hitting that red subscribe button. We're back with a brand new week of some easy and delicious homemade meals. We tried a couple of new recipes this week as well as pulled out a couple of things we had not made in a long time. We had a celebration or two in our family and we've got a bonus dessert recipe for you at the end. We hope you enjoy all the food in this week's What's for Dinner video. We start out this week with uh, what we had on Monday, which was a crock pot meal. We did end up doing some, a little bit of something for the Super Bowl, but I stuck that at the end. It wasn't nearly as interesting as this recipe was. I chopped some onion. I had some fresh garlic on hand, which if you've watched here very often, you know, doesn't happen all the time. I usually use uh, jarred minced garlic, but I chopped up a lot of onion and some fresh garlic to get ready to put a chicken dish in my crock pot. I'm sure you could use a regular crock pot. I just used the casserole crock pot that I've got. I took two chicken breasts out of the freezer. I thawed them most of the way. They were still a little frozen. I find that they're a little bit easier to cut. I cut them on a diagonal in some nice even sized pieces and got everything ready to go in the crock pot. I sprayed it really well and started layering in the ingredients. Two tablespoons of butter, half a cup of chicken broth, not much liquid, some onion and garlic, I will leave a link to this recipe that we used. I know this looks kind of odd, I did chop fresh onion and fresh garlic, but I went ahead and added some garlic powder, which the original recipe actually did call for and a little bit of onion powder and then some salt and pepper and then I laid out the chicken slices that I had put. That's why I like using my casserole crock pot for this one but I'm sure a regular oval or round crock pot would work just great for this one. I'll we'll put these on high for about 30 minutes and then cut them down to low and we'll see how long they take to cook. Yep, here we go again. I can't be trusted to follow recipes. The original recipe does not call for Italian seasoning, but I thought this kind of had a chicken fettuccine-ish type of vibe to it, so I added some Italian seasoning, more salt and pepper. These kind of dishes, I'm convinced you can't get enough flavor in them. I do think they keep more of their flavor at cooking in the crock pot versus the instant pot, but that's just me. About halfway through, I did flip them over, Another reason I like my casserole crock pot, much like my little West Bend slow cookers, I actually think it cooks faster. The original recipe calls for these chicken pieces to cook for three to five hours on low. I don't think it took nearly that long in this appliance. It cooks a little hot. I did flip them over and they were probably ready in under two hours. One cup of milk, or in my case half and half, three tablespoons of flour. add the milk and the flour mixture to the chicken pieces and cook it. The original recipe says 30 minutes on high until the sauce is thickened and then we're going to take the chicken out and stir it around and then add some chopped fresh spinach. I probably used a little less because with leftovers I don't think the spinach heats up nearly as good but that's just personal preference. And then one half cup of grated or shredded Parmesan cheese and then put the chicken back in for everything to heat through. A new slow cooker garlic parmesan chicken. I'll leave a link if we like this. The sauce has gotten really nice and thick. It said you could serve it over pasta, if rice, or mashed potatoes. I had a free package of these Idahoan mashed potatoes in my pantry. I got free from Abada, so we're going to try it over the mashed potatoes. If we don't like that, I'll probably just make some penne. Just did some frozen corn really quick. We'll leave a comment and a link to this recipe if we liked it. Slow cooker garlic parmesan chicken is what's for dinner today. I 
have the air fryer preheating. Mine takes three minutes. Some models do, some models don't. Use one of these foil pans. I sprayed it with some cooking spray. This is my cooking for two take on a Pioneer Woman recipe I saw for taco tots that I did in the air fryer, but the original recipe is in the oven, so I'll leave a link to that. Got out another one of my favorite kitchen gadgets. This is a Chefin brand vegetable brush. You put your finger through the little loop and it helps you to wash your vegetables. So I had a zucchini in my produce drawer that I washed really well and then cut into a really fine dice. Also finely diced some red onion. Preheated my skillet and then added the olive oil and then I added the finely diced zucchini and the onion first because they will t take the longest to cook. Sauteed those until they were about halfway done. Then I added some frozen corn, some drained and rinsed canned black beans, and a little more corn because Tim loves corn. Heated that all through. I added some taco seasoning. some salsa. Season to taste with salt and pepper. The Pioneer Woman recipe said about five minutes shy of them being done to pull them out of the oven and to cover them in Monterey Jack cheese. I do have five minutes left on these but I don't think it's going to take the full time to cook. I'm going to go ahead and cover them with some shredded cheese and probably check them in two or three minutes. I think the cheese will be melted and I think they are uh, yep just about done. Tim will be thrilled. I say that because Tim does not like tater tots. I love them but he loves french fries. I could obviously not go very long without cheese. I used three different kinds and then put the sauteed vegetable filling to make some quesadillas. I did decide to make a larger one for Tim. So I put cheese, the vegetable filling, and more cheese, and then a tortilla on top. And then when I went to flip it, I did not have my camera on and I missed making a horrible mess. I had trouble flipping the first one, so we're gonna make this one a half moon. Maybe I won't make a mess. You want me to mess it up? Yeah. Can we do it? No, I, I think I can do it. Yeah, you do it. Look how dirty that one is. Try not to mess them up. This is the only one that will look good. They're filling all in it, so you got to go this way. There you go. One, two, three. Perfect. Go ahead, pretend I'm not here. Pretend you're not even here digging in my guacamole. We are having veggie quesadillas, taco tots, cheesy taco tots. Tim loves a tater tot. Is that a tot. Those are flat tots. Go ahead and give them a try. That's something new. I told him you don't like tots. Uh, this is probably the first time I bought tater tots in 10 years, maybe 15. Uh oh. Did you can I wrap ever? anything in and cheese, cheese and it's good. good. And we had a little accident flipping the first one. So I made the second one in a half moon. Made some quick creamy guacamole. We'll have sauce and chips. That's what's for dinner today. Those tater tots are good. Are they good? You like them? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Two thumbs up.
For today's dinner, I'm gonna try something I've only made once before and it's been a long time. It kind of met with mixed success and it was probably user error on my part, but I'm a little worried about this one. This is for some steak bites. We had one more steak of Tim's in the freezer that we tried to food seal with our food saver vacuum seal and it did not seal. The last steak we took out of the freezer for him, he said it had a little bit of a freezer burnt taste and that's what I'm expecting with this one. So rather than just cooking it on the outdoor grill, which is what he usually does, I'm gonna marinate it. This recipe calls for cutting a sirloin or hanger steak into bite-sized pieces and then mixing up a marinade and I'm gonna put it all together in a Ziploc and let it marinate a couple hours and I'm hoping that will help uh, the freezer issues because it did not seal correctly, which was hopefully user error on my part. I don't think we've encountered anything else out of the food saver that had this, except of course, his expensive ribeye steaks. So the ingredients for the sauce are balsamic, honey, and I'm gonna use part honey, part agave, some soy sauce, I'm gonna use liquid aminos, some oil, and then some seasonings, and we will get this marinating to cook in a little while. The recipe said to marinate the steak one to four hours, but as I said, it was supposed to be for a hanger or sirloin, which is probably a little bit tougher cut of meat, so I'm probably gonna, I will likely only marinate this one to two hours before I cook it. loves a baked potato when he has steak, so I took two russet potatoes, washed them really well, dried them really well, took a fork and pricked holes in them. You could do them in the oven, and I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine, hey Wendy, about doing potatoes in the microwave versus the air fryer. The air fryer saves a little bit of time from the oven. Uh, the microwave is obviously the quickest way to go, but we actually like them in the air fryer occasionally because horror of horrors. I scrub them really well and we even eat the potato skins when I rub them in olive oil like this and then put a whole lot of kosher or sea salt. The skins get really crispy. Heat up a cast iron skillet. I think the best way to cook steak inside is in cast iron. Once it was really hot I added some oil. Then I did try to, try to take a slotted spoon and pull out the steak bites so they weren't quite so wet. I didn't do a great job. If you saw there, I just dripped some liquid and lit up my fire. We ended up cooking them about three-fourths of the way in the cast iron skillet, and then we actually finished them off in the air fryer once the potatoes were done about 40 or 45 minutes after we put them in, and it made the edges a lot crispier. I'm trying to get back into doing salads, struggling with the toppings, so I simply took some romaine, some Parmesan cheese, black pepper, and croutons, and tossed with our favorite Cardini's Caesar dressing. And this is what they looked like when they came out of the air fryer, crispy on the edges. Some steak bites, some baked potatoes out of the air fryer that we will turn, that we will turn into loaded potatoes with butter, sour cream, cheese, and probably bacon bits. A quick Caesar salad, definitely Tim's kind of meal. Steak bites and sides is what's for dinner today. We're cleaning up some bits and pieces from the freezer, having a little 
snacks and then a chicken sandwich. We're starting off with a pretzel and some cheese sticks that we did in the air fryer. We'll dip the cheese sticks in marinara and then the spicy chicken fillets from Sam's going next and we'll have a sandwich and I predict in a few minutes I'm going to be stuffed. We cooked these at 370 for 14 minutes flipping after 10. And I was right. I predicted that the game would be uh, not interesting. We didn't watch much and I was full from the snacks so Tim had the spicy chicken all to himself. It's a season of birthdays in our family. Last week we had two for the girls. This week we had a birthday celebration for Tim's brother Terry over at their store. They fixed pizza and wings and fried cauliflower and taco fixings and a lot of snacks and some broccoli salad, some chicken salad, and some grape salad. And you gotta have cake. Happy birthday, dear Terry. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Oh, you didn't even blow it. You don't blow on you, cake. You clapped on it. <laughs> <laughs> you clapped at it. Coronavirus on people. Well, I know exactly. Yeah. So, so that was a coronavirus blow? Yeah, hold on. I'm going to make some cookies. I think we've shown these on the channel. It's probably been a year or two, and I think they were in an around the house video and not in one of the weekly dinner videos. I'll leave a link to the recipe. These are my sister's cappuccino crinkles. We're going to cream the butter and the brown sugar, and then add some cocoa, instant, I'm going to use decaf coffee, some baking soda, some cinnamon, two egg whites, I add a pinch of salt, and the recipe calls for vanilla yogurt, I have plain so I'll add some vanilla, and some flour, and we will roll them into balls, and then dip the balls in sugar, and bake them off in the oven, and make some very good cappuccino crinkles. Mix it all in with the mixer, then you can mix the rest of the flour by hand. As you can see, this is a very thick, very wet, and sticky dough. It starts climbing up on my uh, beaters on my hand mixer, so I just pushed it all off and finished mixing it with a spoon or really by hand. I don't make these cookies all that often, and if memory serves, the dough is a bit of a bear to get all the flour mixed in. I usually end up finishing mixing it. I try it with a spoon and I usually end up combining the rest of it with my hands. It's a very wet, very sticky dough. I am going to try to roll the balls using my hands and I think what I always end up doing is getting two spoons but basically you roll it in a ball, roll it in sugar, put it on a cookie sheet. I'm going to use my silpats and they will flatten as they bake. They bake at 350 for about 8 to 10 minutes depending on your oven. Quick note about these cookies because they do have yogurt in them. They need to be stored in the refrigerator. We just reheat them in the microwave for about 10 or 12 seconds to warm them back up. But they're different and delicious. Thanks so much for stopping by and watching this week. Take care. Have a wonderful and truly blessed day.